the ace here, I know he is the star of the show, Ace Stop Going Crazy. He knows that his ball is here and his blanket, so he's losing his mind. If you guys can just let me know in the comments that you can hear me. You can hear me? Okay, perfect. So fire away any questions you have. I'm here to answer them. And in a moment, Crazy Ace, he has lost his beard, but he will play with his ball and his blanket. <laughs> he is adorable. He just had a bath today so that he could be pretty for his live. Favorite breed, um, I've told, I, I've mentioned this before, but German Shepherd and Pomeranian. Hey, say hello. How tall am I? I am 4'10". I am very small. Ace eats kibble because he refuses to eat raw. Raw is always my number one choice. Um, he... He eats quite a bit now, but. At what age should you use the undercoat, undercoat rake on your Aussie? Uh, probably when they start to shed. So around a year, a year and a half. <laughs> I am 30 years old. Uh, I have never worked with a Caucasian Shepherd. I would love to work with one, but nobody has them. And if they do have them, they're usually not friendly with strangers. So most people don't book them at the groomers. These questions are coming in so fast. I look like I'm 21. Thank you. I am 30. I'm getting old. Uh, I do like ragdoll cats. I never see them, but I do like them. The biggest dog I groomed, I think, would have to be the um, English Mastiff that I groomed in the channel. He was 200 pounds, so he, I think he was 200 pounds. So that's definitely the largest dog I've ever done. I have never done a Clumber Spaniel before. Do I accidentally cut whiskers? So on cats, no, um, it has happened as an accident if they move, but on dogs, I cut whiskers all the time. Have I groomed anything besides dogs and cats? I've done rabbits and I did a duck once and a pig once. They're on the channel. What drew me to animal grooming? So um, I actually went to school to be a hairdresser and I didn't love it, but I've always loved animals. Um, so I just got a job at a local grooming salon and she taught me how to groom and that was it. Yes, I groomed a rat once, you're right. Am I going to be doing any more angry floofs? Um, yes, this Saturday at 12, you should definitely tune in because there is a Shiba Inu that was pretty crazy and his video is going out Saturday at 12. Have I ever had a dog that I couldn't do? Absolutely. I have had many dogs that I couldn't do that I had to send home. Ace is 10 years old. I'm glad you thought that my recent short was funny because it was super embarrassing to do, but my goal was to make people laugh. So if I achieved that goal, then <laughs> these questions are coming in so fast, I can't even read them. Okay. Oh my gosh. In terms of difficulty, which breed is the most difficult to groom? I can't really say that there is a specific breed that is more difficult than others. Really, it has to do with dogs that are trained versus untrained. 
And the dogs that I find that are the least trained usually tend to be the designer breed of the year because a lot of people that get designer breed dogs get them. And by designer breed, I mean mixing a breed and calling it a doodle, for example. Um, the majority of people that get these dogs, it tends to be their first ever dog. And so they don't know how to train them or what exactly they need to do to train them. So the most difficult dog to do would be an untrained dog. However, that Shiba Inu came pretty close. It's the only one I've ever groomed though. So I can't say that it is the breed because it's the only dog, the only Shiba I've ever done. How do I get cats acclimated to the bath? So years ago when I rescued a bunch of animals, um, well, I, I didn't rescue them personally, but I was their uh, courier to take them from Kazakhstan to Canada. I had to bathe a couple kittens for months because they had a skin condition. And that was the first time that I really realized that if you bathe a kitten from a very young age, they were only six weeks old. Um, I bathed them twice a week for two or three months. I can't remember exactly how many months. The cats were not afraid of water at that point. So they had been getting groomed regularly from six weeks until they were about four months old. And at that point, they were not afraid of water. They weren't afraid of the blow dryer. Any specific breed of cat that I find difficult to groom? No, um, but I can say probably the easiest cats that I've ever groomed was a Persian or um, I think I had the, uh, was it domestic short? No, not domestic short hair. I can't remember what, what breed that was now. I tried the Ecker Groomer on my mom's cat and it didn't work really well, but it works wonders on getting uh, cat hair out of the carpet. I've heard that before that it's a really good brush to use on furniture to get hair off. But if it didn't work on your cat, I would try again because a lot of times people buy the Ecker Groomer and they say it didn't work, but it, your animal has to be really shedding at that time in order to notice a lot of hair coming off of them and animals go through cycles. So wait until you see a time where you think, okay, there's hair everywhere. The cat goes on me. There's hair all over me and then try it again. Unless it's a long haired cat. If it's a long haired cat, then yes, the Ecri Groomer doesn't do much on long haired cats. Ace, you're being so good. This is really unusual for you. He normally doesn't sit in my arms like this. He normally gives me hell. Do you know you're on TV? What happened to Fredo? Fredo was groomed by me a few times and filmed, but a lot of, um, I, I'm really busy, work is really busy, so it can be really hard to film a pet every time it comes in to get groomed. If you're asking how to get into pet grooming, you should go on my channel. I have an actual video um, where I discuss how I got into it, how you can get into it, the ins and outs of the business, the best business practices. So check that video out on the channel. If you guys are interested um, and you wanna know a little bit more about my personal life or my family, my brother has actually started a channel. It's called The Spicy Nona. So check that channel out. There's a couple of videos on there already where I do appear in them. Um, there's, we're gonna try to get one video out a week. So check that out if you wanna know more about me personally and my family and you know how I got into everything that I did because my family is obviously a huge, um, played a huge impact on who I am today, so. Do animals poop a lot in your backyard after being groomed? Almost every single dog on my channel that you have seen go into my backyard has definitely pooped. <laughs> okay, so who wants to see Ace be a lunatic with the ball? Ace, you want your ball? Do you want your ball? Are you getting excited? <gasps> Do you want your ball? Oh yeah, I'm gonna lose it. Okay. Let's try this out. Okay. Bear with me as I get used to using this camera. Okay, number one, 
you must give him a blanket. And then the ball. This is not my house, um, but I actually have terrible Wi-Fi at my house and it's impossible for me to do lives there. So yes, I'm not at my house. This is actually just my phone camera. Um, it is a Samsung. I wanted to use my camera camera, but I am really not that tech savvy and I find it very difficult to hook up my camera to a live because every single time I hook up my camera to a live, my camera for whatever reason shuts off. So I'm just using my phone. Ace, you're definitely gonna end up losing the ball underneath something like you always do. Oh, what is happening here? So the spicy Nona is my brother's channel. So the spicy S P I C Y Nona N O N N A. There is a picture of my Nona as the picture of the channel. And you'll know right away that it's um, the right channel because um, I think Melvin appears in one of the videos and Ace appears in one of the videos. So Ace will do this all day, every day, forever, until he is so exhausted that he falls asleep. He's been like this ever since I got him. <laughs> Yes, you heard Nona. I am, I come from an Italian family and my grandparents are immigrants from Italy. I actually went to Italy this summer and saw exactly where they grew up, the villages that they grew up in. And that was really, really cool. We don't know why Ace does this. Um, I definitely think that there is a little bit of a screw loose in Ace's brain. <laughs> The first time I gave him a ball as a puppy, I actually still have that video the first time I gave him a ball and he just lost his mind. Why? Why do you keep doing this? Special would be an understatement. Have I mentioned about getting another German Shepherd dog? Well, you guys will have to just stay tuned because it's definitely a possibility Honestly, I really want to throw him in a room full of balls and see what he would do because I think he would potentially have a heart attack. I don't think he would know how to react to that. So when he does this, when he stares with his tag, tail wagging, that means he wants me to throw it. If I pick him up when he'll, he's doing this, he will freak out because he wants to go back on the ground because he wants to play with his ball. I really think that we should make a video where I put him in a ball pit. I think it'll be the funniest thing ever. There is a ball inside this blanket. He is unburying it and reburying it and unburying it and reburying it or however, however you were supposed to say it. Have I ever been upset with an owner? Absolutely. I've witnessed a ridiculous amount of neglect throughout the years of me grooming. Um, when I first started grooming, I actually put myself out like I had like a Kijiji ad so and I was one of the cheap well I was probably the cheapest groomer in the area so I accumulated a lot of people 
some people that were low income, but a lot of people that were not low income, but they were just looking for the best deal. And in that process, I came around to people that, sorry, I came across a lot of people that either A, did not want to pay for medical care for their pets because they, you know, didn't see their pet as family or B, um, people that couldn't afford medical care for their pets. So because of that, I witnessed a lot of neglect and uh, yeah, it was very, it was definitely not easy to deal with. Thank you to everybody who keeps sending me um, donations or uh, I, I'm sorry that I'm not thanking you personally, but the messages are coming in so quick that I can't even see your name. You do not have to be licensed to be a um, pet groomer. <clears throat> Do I get irritated when doing Huskies? Not really. Um, the only time that I get really irritated when I'm working on a dog is if the dog requires a full haircut and they won't stay still. Not that I'll really do anything about it, but it can be frustrating because when you're trying to groom a dog and they're moving around so much, it's A, dangerous, and B, the haircut turns out poor. So um that can be frustrating but huskies don't get full haircuts they might just sing it to me the entire time but that's not a big deal i always sound like i'm pissed off um well i am not always pissed off but thank you for that um people are asking for karen stories and i'm trying to think do you have any brussels griffons as clients um, I actually only ever groomed one Brussels Griffon. Um, he was awesome, but that was for a very short period of time. I don't know if the dog passed away or if the people moved away. So I don't have much uh, experience with them. They're not a very common dog. Have I ever gotten any serious injuries from grooming? No, I have not. I have one scar, but that was my own fault. The dog didn't bite me. Um, I, they were hooked up. And when I went to go unhook them, they pulled and the hook went into my hand and that was fun. Yes, I have groomed a Borzoi. Um, my best friend is actually showing the number one two Borzoi, or the number one two, <laughs> the number two Borzoi in Canada right now. He is gorgeous and he will eventually be on the channel. He's won so many best in shows. So I'm really excited for that dog to be on the channel because most people don't know what a Borzoi is and they are really unique. I'm trying to think of a Karen story. There are so many Karen stories out there from my clients. I don't even know where to begin. Um, there, I think I've told this story on TikTok before, so some of you might already know, but there was this client who found me on TikTok and she really wanted to get her two West Highland Terriers in. So I booked them both in and one was a puppy and one was an older dog. The older dog was a bit difficult to deal with. Um, it's very common when dogs get older that they can be difficult to deal, uh, to deal with. But I got her done and then the puppy just needed a tidy up. So I got her done as well. Um, she loved the groom. She thanked me so much. She tipped me and then she rebooked. And when she rebooked, the puppy was very matted. So when I was grooming the puppy, I realized, okay, I'm not gonna be able to get these mats out. So I just shaved the areas where there was matting and I left the rest of her long. And the reason why I did that was because I thought she'd be in shock, crazy ace, if I shaved the entire dog. I did not like the way the dog looked. She looked horrible, but it's what I had to work with because the dog was matted anyways. She ended up rebooking another appointment and I always text my clients the day before to remind them of their appointment. So I texted her, I reminded her, she said, yes, I'll be there with a smiley face. And then the day of the appointment, she did not show up. So I texted her and asked her if she was, and she didn't text me back for about a half an hour. And then when she finally did text me back, she proceeded to swear at me and tell me how horrible of a job that I did on her dog last time. And I am a terrible groomer and she will not be showing up today. 
And so I said, okay, that's no problem if you didn't like what was done on your pet the last time, um, but you didn't have to like rebook another appointment. You could have canceled it. And she said, now you know what it's like to get blanked over because I can't swear. So essentially she purposely did not show up for her appointment because she was so mad about her dog's haircut, hair of which grows back by the way, that she did it on purpose because she was trying to, I don't know, cheat me out of income that day, I guess. So I, that was the most petty thing that any owner has ever done to me. And it was absolutely hilarious. So that is like one of my biggest Karen stories. Do I tell my customers if they're overfeeding their pets? So funny story. So I used to work for a lady that never told the owners the truth about their pet. Never told owners if their dog was difficult. Never told owners if they thought their dog was unwell or overweight. Um, she always kept everything to herself and she would pretend like every dog she groomed was amazing, even if they weren't. And when I got into grooming dogs, I thought, okay, I'm not doing that because if I tell someone that their dog is really well behaved when it's not, then that the outcome is not going to be any good because they can't work with their dog or make things better. So when I got into grooming, I decided I was going to be honest with people. And I remember I'll tell people if I think that their dog is overweight, their dog is um, difficult for grooming because they can't stand because they are so obese. I will definitely tell people. And some people do take that personally. Actually, one time a client had said to me, well, my dog does not come here to get insulted. And I thought, well, I'm not insulting your dog. I'm kind of insulting you, but okay. I like dogs and cats. Um, I had uh, two cats. Unfortunately, um, I went through a bit of a situation a few years ago. And because of that, I had to move. And when I moved, I could not take my cats with me. Um, one cat as you guys already know, was featured on the channel. I couldn't take her with me because she did not like um, my other pets, my dogs. Her name is Macha on the channel, but her actual name when I had her was Misha. She was the white cat with blue eyes. Um, so I had my German Shepherd and then I got Misha. And Misha absolutely hated my German Shepherd, regardless of the fact that Zoe was really good with her. And it, it, Misha stayed with me for years, mostly because I couldn't find her a home that didn't have any other animals already. And she didn't like cats either. So she didn't like dogs or cats. So I ended up rehoming her to one of my really good friends who renamed her Matcha. And then another cat was the one that I brought home from Kazakhstan. Oh, you're going to lose your ball. And I kept her. Uh, sorry, him. I his name was Kaz and I kept him for a few years. But when I went through the situation that I went through and I had to move, um, Kaz was an escape artist and he was really, really, really uh, smart. And um, he would know that if somebody was not the own, like if it wasn't me or my partner at the time that was in the house opening the doors he would know if it was a friend of ours and he would know he was smart enough to know that he could get out the door because our friends or our family members wouldn't shut the screen door quick enough so he would take off all the time and i am not um, an advocate for outdoor cats i don't think you should be letting your cats outside um, specifically because i had outdoor cats growing up and almost always one day they just didn't come home so obviously something happened to them, whether they actually one time my outdoor cat was stolen from the neighbor kid. She was really young and she wanted a pet. So she stole my cat and kept my cat underneath her deck for a month and didn't feed him. And somehow the cat survived. So things like this happen when you have outdoor cats and I just don't agree with it. I think if you have a pet, it should be inside or taken out supervised only. So I did take my cats outside, but they went outside with a harness and a leash. I didn't let them loose. I'm not, I'm talking about urban areas. I'm not talking about for, uh, farm cats. I realize that cats have jobs and on a farm, their job is to, um, you know, get rid of the rodents. So I, I completely understand that. I'm talking about if you live in the city, it's just, if you have a pet, 
you should be keeping it inside or keeping it supervised outside. Anyways, um, last long story short, he would get out the door all the time. And when I moved to my new location, I lived on a really busy street and I was very concerned that he was going to get out and get hit by a car. So it was a heartbreaking decision, but I chose to rehome him again with another friend who lived in an apartment building actually. So there was no chance that this cat was ever going to get outside. And I just thought it would be safer. And the cat is still alive to this day and he's thriving and the owners love him. So I do think it was the best decision, but it was a really hard decision to make because I loved the cat. I also, you know, went all the way to Kazakhstan, brought it home, nursed him back to health. He was like a dog. He was so friendly. Um, I would take him for walks on his leash and harness and he would walk with us. And um, another thing is that Gidget absolutely loved him. They played like crazy. So it was really, really heartbreaking to rehome him. But I did feel that it was the best thing for him because had he got out and hit by a car, I would have been devastated. So, but I absolutely do love cats and dogs. The only reason why I don't have a cat, you guys, is because I hate litter boxes. I really hate litter boxes. I will neglect them, which is super gross. So I came to the decision that having a cat for me is not a good idea unless I live with somebody who is happy to do the litter box because I absolutely despise it. Any advice on general bathing of a drama queen that really dislikes water? Um, good luck. No, <laughs> uh, I would suggest if you're drama queen dog loves peanut butter to get one of those lick mats and put them on the wall of your shower and hopefully that will distract your dog try to make bathing a positive experience for your dog yes i pick up the dog's poop picking up dog poop outside is a lot different than cleaning out a litter box it's not about picking up the poop litter boxes stink their urine stinks um, it's something that you have to do several times a day so that your house doesn't stink. Cats track litter all over your house. It's just litter box are just not sanitary. And not to mention, I have dogs that really love litter boxes. So I also have to make sure the litter box is in an area that my dogs can't get to so that they don't eat cat litter. And it's just overall a gross experience and I'm not a fan of it. If I could train my cat to use the bathroom outdoors like my dogs do, then I would get a cat. But training a cat to do that is going to require a lot of um, uh, attention and I don't really have all that, but I love cats and dogs. I definitely do like dogs more than cats, but I love them. I love all animals. Ace is a Yorkie and a Maltese mix. I will not train a cat to use the toilet. I know somebody who trained their cat to use the toilet. I'm sorry, but cats do not know when they peed on the toilet seat. And when I am sharing a toilet with a cat who uses the toilet and there is cat pee on the toilet seat, that is super gross. They don't know how to flush. <laughs> yes, it's trainable. I've seen my friend train her cat to use the litter box, but when I have to share, or sorry, trained her cat to use a toilet, but when I have to share a toilet with a cat, that's pretty nasty. Ace is, you asked, Ace is 10 years old and he weighs about 3.5 pounds right now. There is um, plenty of mutts going to be on the channel soon. Uh, one of them is actually a Cocker Spaniel mix that is really funny looking. So when you guys see that video, it's, it's pretty funny. Ace looks healthy and energetic, really. I mean, he has lots of energy, but he's certainly not the healthiest dog. Um, recently found out that he has Addison's disease, which explains a lot about his food and water problems. That being said, he has had food and water problems his whole life. Um, this is, Addison's disease is new. So Addison's disease, he's lost a lot of his hair and I have to get put eye drops in his eyes every single day and he has to get prednisone every single day but he has definitely started eating more since I put him on prednisone.
So the adopt don't shop situation, let's talk about that. That is one of my absolute favorite topics. Um, I absolutely agree with adopting. I think adopting is an amazing thing, but to say adopt don't shop is, um, what's the word that I'm looking for? Kind of irresponsible and I'll explain to you why. So my motto is always going to be adopt or shop responsibly. I recently went to my local Humane Society. I did a video. Um, I talked about a bunch of the dogs that were there that were looking for homes. And the interesting thing about that is that every single dog that was at the Humane Society was a mixed breed dog. And what I mean by that is not that mixed breed dogs end up in shelters. What I mean by that is that a lot of those dogs, because where I'm from, there's no strays. We don't have stray dogs. We have stray cats, but we don't have stray dogs. So I noticed that they were all mixed breeds, which means that a lot of them were caused by people that did not spay or neuter their pets, or it was caused by people that uh, purposely bred their mixed breed dogs. And a lot of people will say, oh, I'm breeding my dog because she just has the best temperament and she's so beautiful. And the thing is, is that what ends up happening is you breed a dog that you end up selling irresponsibly your dog could end up with medical or behavioral problems. And then a lot of these dogs end up in the shelter, which is the truth. If you go, like, that's not to say that purebreds don't end up in the shelter, but for example, a, a purebred German shepherd breeder that I know, if anybody cannot keep one of those puppies, then they will take that dog back and they will find a home for that dog. That dog will never end up in a shelter. The reason why shelters are so overloaded is because of the stray population in some places in the world, but it's also because of people that are irresponsibly breeding dogs. And then these dogs are the ones that end up in shelters and they will not take those dogs back if the new owner can't keep them. They will not screen the new owner to make sure that it's an appropriate home. They're just looking for money or they're just looking to get rid of the puppies. So responsible breeders are out there, you guys breeding dogs because they love the breed they want to make the best quality and the healthiest of the breed with the best temperaments and they will never allow their dogs to end up in shelters no matter how old they are so responsible breeders are out there responsible breeders are not the reason for animals ending up in shelters and there's lots of people that are looking to buy dogs for specific reasons and they should have the right to buy them from people that are responsibly breeding because not a shelter dog may not be the best option for them. Or for example, a lot of, uh, a lot of the shelter dogs here, they shed and some people are allergic to dogs and they want non-shedding dogs. The problem with that is that when a non-shedding dog ends up in the shelter, they're adopted immediately. So that's to say people that want a dog that doesn't shed, but they can't find one in the shelter, they should get one in the shelter anyways that does shed because they should not be purchasing from a breeder. There's just, there's so many reasons why responsible breeding is definitely okay. And again, adopting is awesome as well. I've adopted dogs. I've bought dogs from uh, responsible breeders. So it, it hurts my soul when people bring down breeders because they aren't all looped in the same category. There's irresponsible ones and then there's responsible ones. And those irresponsible people are the sole reason why these animals are ending up in shelters. So thank you for coming to my TED talk on that. Really glad somebody brought that up. Um, I have family members that are allergic to dogs and they are not allergic to the dogs that they own that don't shed. They do not produce the same or the same amount of dander that causes allergies. So that's all I have to say. Slow mode pleads Vanessa. I don't really know how to do that. Thoughts on doodle breeding. My thoughts on doodle breeding are... I mean, if you watch my channel, you pretty much already know my thoughts on doodle breeding. Um, I just find that a lot of, I'm going to say about 80% of the doodles that I've interacted with have been very, have very poor temperaments are very skittish. A lot of them have skin and allergy problems. Um, a lot of them still do shed or produce a lot of dander. And then people 
get these dogs thinking they're going to be non-shedding. And the reason for that is because they are being bred by irresponsible breeders who are telling people, oh yeah, they don't shed. Oh yeah, they really need to be groomed. Oh yeah, they're the most, you know, low maintenance dog you can get. And that's just not true. So, you know, people that breed doodles are scamming people. Mayo comes for appointments all the time. I did him recently, but I did not film him. Um, my boyfriend films almost every single one of the videos on my channel. So we can only film when he's available. So he doesn't always get the chance to film because he's a busy guy. This is not my new puppy. This is 10 year old Ace who acts like a total weirdo with his ball and blanket. Okay, where is your ball? Where? I'm gonna make you chase it and bark like a crazy person. Where'd it go? I can't find it. Where is it, Ace? Where is it, Ace? Oh, there it is, I found it. Okay, ready? Ace will not stop. He'll, he'll do this forever. Like, look, he's freaking out because he doesn't have his blanket and he wants to get that ball to his blanket. Look at him. He's going to get it there too. Watch. <laughs> Wrong way, Ace. Uh-oh, it's going to fall down the stairs. Oh, no. <laughs> You're such a Looney Tune. Cavapoos are going to be the same thing as any mixed breed dog. Um, I would say the only mixed breed dog that I've ever really come encounter with that I felt was a really good mix and have great temperaments and health is the Maltese Poodle mix. Every single Maltese Poodle mix that I have ever groomed has been a wonderful dog. My favorite high velocity dryer is going to be the K9 II. Or the K93, but I, I like the K92 better. He could bring the ball up the stairs if it was a little bit smaller. This ball is a little bit too big, so it won't fit in his mouth. You want me to say Ace is a good boy, but Ace is not a good boy. Ace drives me nuts every minute of every day. He barks at me like crazy. He is extremely demanding. He is very poorly trained on my part. That is entirely my fault. I am a groomer, guys. I am not a trainer. So I can't say he's a good boy because he is a little brat. Right, Ace? Ace, are you a brat? Are you getting thirsty? Ace doesn't mean it. Oh, Ace means it. If you ask my boyfriend, I'm not going to swear, but he will say he has a love-hate relationship with Ace because Ace treats me very poorly and he doesn't like the way that Ace treats me. That's what he'll tell you. No, Ace is not going through puppy uglies. He is just going through old man uglies, losing all of his hair. <laughs> Do I think smaller or bigger dogs are more destructive? Well, obviously, if you have a large breed dog that is poorly trained, then it's going to do a lot more damage than a small dog, right? I have only ever groomed one Brussels Griffon. <clears throat> I got Ace 10 years ago. I cannot believe it's been 10 years. Time flies. So I was 20 years old when I got Ace. My longest lived Chihuahua client is still alive. I couldn't even tell you how old he is. He is ancient. Ace's lifespan is probably between um, 12 and 15 years. I don't think he's gonna make it to 15, but maybe 12. Ace does not have neurological issues, although I don't know, maybe he does because he's been mental his whole life. Oh, he's not stopping. Don't worry. He's just looking for the ball. And once he finds it, he'll pounce on it. Ace, where's your ball?
There he goes, he found it. I do not script my videos. I usually edit the entire video and then I'll go back and turn on the microphone and just say whatever comes to mind. How does Ace add to the pack? Well, Ace is clearly the um, boss of everybody. He was also the boss of my German Shepherd. Have I ever groomed a cotton de Tulier? Actually, if you'd like to see one, this is Gigi. She is a Caton de Tulier. She's my mom's dog. I got her for my mom for Christmas two years ago. Gigi, are you a good girl? Yes. So yes, I've groomed a Caton de Tulier because I groom her all the time. She actually just got a groom. Oh, Gigi. <laughs> Gigi is the most chill dog ever. She does not care about Ace and his blanket over there, like this crazy nut bar still going nuts over there. Gigi, are you tired? Are you sleeping? Um, I have done a duck tolling retriever. Gigi, do you have any personality? Or are you just done? Why? Why do you keep giving me problems? Boop her nose. She doesn't care about anything, this dog. I didn't say she was dumb. She's just lazy. It's not low battery. It's um, uh, the Weeble that I use to hold my phone so that the video is not shaky. It just keeps randomly telling me that it wants to give me problems. Oh, he won't stop. He'll be like this with the blanket for hours until I take it away. Yes, he will bring his blanket all around the house. And then eventually he will get so tired after hours of playing that he will just fall asleep on the blanket. Yes, I've groomed a sphinx. I have it on the channel, actually. There's a video of me grooming a hairless cat. Uh, it can be any blanket. Doesn't matter what blanket it is. Doesn't matter what ball it is either. He loves every ball. Actually, I think there's a video on the channel of him playing with one of those giant workout balls. He will kick that thing all around the yard and lose his mind because it's too big for him to bury. This is not my house, no, this is my mom's house. I've actually never had him encounter a balloon. I don't think he would like a balloon. He'd pop it instantly and then probably get scared. Gidget and Melvin are not here. It's just Ace and Gigi today. Ace does not like car rides. He actually shakes the whole time. What things do I consider when taking clients for filming appointments? Um, I try to find something that's different from a dog that's already been on the channel or a cat that's already been on the channel because I like to entertain you guys. Um, I really love giant breeds because they're a lot of fun to work with and they can make for really entertaining videos. Obviously unique breeds um, that I've never seen before. 
Mace, you're crazy. I wish that I could, don't you wish that you could just be as simple as Ace and a ball and a blanket just makes you the happiest thing in the entire world? <laughs> Um, if a cat is being really difficult for the bath, then I sometimes cannot complete it. It really just depends on the cat and how much they are willing to tolerate. I have never been legitimately attacked by a dog while grooming. Knock on wood. I've been bit, but not bad. There will probably never be a real cameraman reveal because he does not like to be on camera. So we will respect that. I'm gonna try to see if I can get in this with Ace. Turn this around. There we go. Where's your ball? Now I'm too far away and I cannot see what you guys are asking me. Come here. Okay, Ace, let's see. Will you do some tricks for me? Wanna do some tricks? Come here. Sit. Sit. No, I didn't. <laughs> Sit. No, that's not sitting. Ace. See, he gets so insane about his ball that he can't focus on anything. Sit. Ace, come here. Sit down. Shake paw. Okay? Bang, bang. Hey, bang, bang. Play dead, you little jerk. Ace. Bang, bang. No, he can't. He's, so, like, if I had food in my hands, he would do it. But he's so crazy about the ball that it's just, all reasoning goes out the window. You're so crazy. You're so crazy. You're such a crazy dog. Ace is the smallest dog in the world. I've actually groomed dogs smaller than him, but yes, he is pretty small. Is the channel the daytime job for the camera guy? Um, We'll keep that information. A secret. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. If I take away the ball and blanket, I'm very upset. You want to see? He's gonna spin and spin and spin. Sorry, Ace, no more. No more. Ain't nobody want to hear that. Um, being on the internet is definitely something that is difficult to maintain privacy and um, you kind of always have to be aware it's just the way that it is. Hang out with Gigi here for a little bit. Come here, Gigi. Come here. My worst client story, the owner, not the animal. It's kind of, you know, you, you kind of block those things out, you know, so you don't have to hear it and think about that. Worst client story, the owner. Ace is barking, which means that he probably lost his ball. No, this is Gigi. She is a Catan de Tulier, and she will just sit like this in my arms. Very lazy. I am 4'10". I am not very tall. 
can't really think of the really bad client stories. I'm sure I'll think about it afterwards and be like, oh yeah, there was that story. No, an owner has never hit me. Will Ace ever get his own channel? I mean, he's 10 years old, he's kind of old. So I kind of will feel like if I made his own channel, he won't be around for very much longer and then that will be really sad. But just a reminder for those who just tuned in to head over to my brother's channel, The Spicy Nona. I do appear on that channel and it's all about my grandparents and they are really funny. Oh, dude, you kind of stink. I just gave you a bath. Why do you stink already? Do I have ADHD? I don't think I'd have ADHD, but I guess nowadays you scroll through TikToks and you're like, hey, maybe I have every disorder. I don't know. The spicy Nona. Yep, because... It's about her cooking, but she is also a very spicy individual. So Nona, N-O-N-N-A. -N -N I don't know how to link the channel in this chat. I'm not sure how to do that. Yes, somebody just commented the spicy Nona, Sidewinder. That is the correct name of the channel. It's a picture of an old lady in the thumbnail. Nona is Italian. He's still going. Look at that tongue. Like, aren't you thirsty? You're insane, bro. Do I like cheese? I do like cheese. My body doesn't like cheese, though. Why do I use my hands and not a sponge? Because a sponge would just take way too much time. Ace is definitely spicy. He is the spiciest of the spicy. How are chows to groom? They look like they will deflate nicely. Um, the only chows I've ever groomed have been really good dogs. So my personal experience is that they're great. Although I know a lot of groomers won't take chows because they're dangerous. I am not Greek, I'm Italian. Um, no animal has ever died when grooming, but I did have a dog have a heart attack on my table and she passed out. I had to resuscitate her. Fortunately, I was able to resuscitate her, but she ended up dying a few months later because she had a serious heart condition. I am not afraid of being bitten by a dog. My last name is technically not Greek. Actually, when I was in Italy, I found out exactly what it was. And now I can't remember. But De Prophetis means of the prophets. That's what it means. That's what I learned when I was in Italy anyway. I am 30 years old. Will I ever groom Mabel again? I don't know. It depends if her owner wants to bring her again. That was quite the ordeal just to get her here. So I look so young. Thank you. What would I say is something you would like people to know about my job? Um, I just want to speak on behalf of all groomers is that, you know, there's plenty of jobs out there that are very difficult. So I'm not saying like, you know, oh, grooming is more difficult than other. That's not what I'm saying. Um, it's just that I don't think people realize how much actually goes into pet grooming, how physically exhausting it is, how mentally exhausting it is, how much patience you truly need to have in order to be able to do the job. It's not easy in any way and you're dealing with you know people that suck really a lot of the times and you're dealing with animals that are not trained so it's something to consider about pet grooming especially before you decide you want to get into it
What voltage is my equipment run off of? I wish I had the answer for you, but I don't really know. <laughs> Yes, the lady with the service dog actually con um, contacted me recently and she wants to get her dog back in again so she can show all the subscribers everything that she's done with the dog since we did the GoFundMe. I would like to thank you guys. Um, when I put her on the channel, we had the intent of hoping to raise about $10,000 so that she can get her dog into professional service dog training. You guys raised over $25,000 for her, which was absolutely incredible and unexpected so thank you so much she thanks you so much that was one of the nicest things that i've ever seen um it was yeah it was just remarkable to see something like that and i'm really really happy for her that she's able to get all the work and help that she needs in order to train that dog let's get back to ace ace are you thirsty i think you're thirsty no, I've been getting this question a million times and I've ignored it several times, but I guess I'll just answer it. I am not married, but I am in a serious relationship. My family is from Abruzzo in Italy. Hey, are you thirsty? Ace, look, water. Come here, Ace. Ugh. I know he's thirsty. Advice for a picky eater. I have no advice. Ace sucks. It drives me nuts trying to feed him. Let's get out from under the chairs. How about that, Ace? What do you think? I really like Connie Corsos. Um, everyone that I've groomed has been really a wonderful dog. I only ever groomed Goblin once. They did not call me for another appointment. So maybe if they do, I'll get him in again because he was freaking hilarious. Um, I don't have what my religion is. There is no religion. Ace is being, I want you guys to think about when this live stream started and he still has not stopped. It's been almost an hour now and he has not stopped even for one second. Why not name my dog Ace? What's wrong with that name? Thank you so much, Dite, for the $20. I really appreciate it. You dig my work on things. <laughs> That's a really old playlist. I didn't even know that was public. I would say that a German Shepherd is higher maintenance than a Turburin, specifically on the shedding. He doesn't get tired. I don't understand him. Are you crazy, Ace?
How do I stay dry? A lot of people ask me that question. So um, a lot of the clothing that I wear is quick drying. So even if it gets wet, it'll dry within 20 minutes. So yes, I get wet, but then it dries really fast. Thank you so much, Sherry. I don't have any idea. My favorite dog breed is a German Shepherd. Have dog trainers ever commented on Ace's behavior? Probably. Um, the cord is not going to affect him in any way. He's never going to chew on it. He doesn't do that kind of stuff. So I am not too concerned about the cord. I have three dogs. I removed his beard. It was getting really disgusting and full of garbage and food and everything else. And it stunk. So the beard, it made its appearance and then it needed to go. You will never hear me sing a song. My old blow dryer used to be on the other side of the room and just the hose went through and it was great because the room wasn't so loud. Unfortunately, I don't have the ability to do that where I am. Um, my business was extremely busy before YouTube, but then once YouTube became a thing, obviously my business exploded to the point where I literally could not um, get in clients because I was just too busy. Video editing definitely takes longer than grooming the average dog, for sure. Why am I so confident about my safety with an unknown dog? Um, I can read an animal's body language to know whether or not I think that that animal is a risk. If I do think that that animal is a risk, for example, you, we have the Shiba Inu video coming out this Saturday. I muzzled him right off the bat. I did not give him any opportunities because when he walked in, he was very standoffish. When I tried to pet him, he growled. So right away, I know that that dog has a likeliness to bite. And for my own safety, I decided to muzzle him. But you can really tell on the dog's personality if it's going to be friendly or if I need to be concerned. And you just take proper steps. I always start from the back of a dog, not the front of the dog and stuff like that. So that's why I'm confident because after doing this for 11 years, I have learned the patterns of dogs' behavior when they're going to be aggressive. Yes, my boyfriend is the one who films and sometimes talks behind the camera. I've only been recognized a few times when I've been out. Um, the majority of my viewers come from the States and I am Canadian. So here in Canada, I don't find that very many people know who I am, but I'm sure when I visit the States, I am going to the States this February that I will probably have more people that will recognize me. I do not have any kids. My dogs are my kids for now. Canadians watch YouTube just for whatever reason. The majority of my views come from the States. Ace is insane. Yes, Mickey is still alive. If you're talking about Mickey Mouse, he is still around and still crazy. I think the Equi Groomer would probably work really well on your AM staff. The least grooming maintenance dog is going to be, well, uh, probably a hairless dog because they don't have any hair to work with, although those dogs still need to be bathed because they get dirty. 
Um, but any short coated dog that all they really need is a brush and a bath every now and then. And then sometimes they need their nails clipped and sometimes they don't. Favorite shampoo. Well, guys, Girl with the Dogs is coming out with their own line soon. So stay tuned for that. I'm really excited about that line of shampoo and other products. So keep that in mind. And if you head over to my website, I already have a ton of products um, that are being sold on the site right now. The website is uh, girlwiththedogs.com. So you can check that out if you want to see um, some of my favorite products. And of course, merchandise. We actually came out with a biothane leash recently, which I'm really, really, really excited about the quality of these leashes. They're just absolutely beautiful. They feel so nice. And biothane leashes are great because they're easy to disinfect and they don't get dirty and smelly. Yes, I have refused dogs for being aggressive. One time I groomed this husky and it was literally trying to kill me. I had to call the owner to come get the dog. The owner actually had to come inside to remove the dog from my bathtub because I couldn't even remove her. And the dog was trying to actually bite the owner as well. And the owner had a really hard time getting the dog out of the bath. So I have definitely refused dogs before. Ace does this every single day with the ball and blanket. He has a ball and blanket at all times so that if he wants to play with it, he will. And not 10 out of 10, he is playing with it. He usually plays with it in the morning. That is his favorite time to play. And then he'll end up sleeping the rest of the day. But he did not have it this morning. I do not have any cats right now. Yes, I dye dog's hair. Um, I actually just dyed Gidget's paws the other day. That live is available on my Amazon. You can watch that video of me dyeing her paws if you like. Why do some dogs die at PetSmart? Dogs die at grooming salons all over the place all the time. It just seems that because PetSmart is such a well-known grooming salon that it gets talked about more. But it happens everywhere all the time, not just PetSmart. My opinion on pit bulls. So every pit bull I've ever worked with has been a really well-behaved, sweet dog. However, I will not groom two pit bulls from the same family at the same time ever. The reason for that is because they are very protective of their, you know, pet, a dog sibling. And if you are working on one pit bull and it's whining, there is a good chance the other pit bull will try to come to its rescue and that can be super dangerous. So I will not groom two pit bulls at the same time, the same family. I will also not allow pit bulls to come in contact with any other dog in my grooming salon at any given time ever, because I do find that a lot of them have a tendency to be dog aggressive. Um, it's just not worth the risk. So that's why I wouldn't allow it. And I've had pit bull owners tell me, um, please do not it let my dog interact with another dog. So I feel as though they know that as well. So those, that's my opinion is I really do like pit bulls, but you know, they were bred to fight other dogs. That's what they were originally, you know, designed for. Some people will say they were designed to, you know, babysit children. That is not true. They were designed to, um, for dog fights with other dogs. So it is common that they, can have a dog aggression, but I do think they're wonderful with people. So, and it, that's not to say that all pit bulls are going to be aggressive with other dogs. That's absolutely not what I'm trying to say. Cause I've met lots of them that are wonderful with other dogs. It's just that me as a professional, I would never allow a pit bull to interact with any other dog in my grooming salon, just out of the fact that I know that it is genetics, that they could be aggressive to other dogs. But that doesn't mean that they can't be a great family dog. And that doesn't mean that I don't like them. And I do love grooming them. I, every single one of them I've ever groomed was super friendly and sweet. Ace is currently eating, that's a good question, oven baked. That's the name of his kibble. That's the only thing that he will eat. So that's why he's eating it. It's not because I think it's the best kibble out there. It's because it's the only thing that this freaking dog will eat. 
I do not have an opinion on Greyhound racing because to be completely honest with you, I do not have any knowledge about it. So I can't sit here and give an opinion on something that I know nothing about. What is my favorite chocolate bar? I liked that question. My favorite chocolate bar is a Kit Kat and I don't know why. I just think that they taste amazing and they are my favorite. So if you guys want to send me Kit Kats, I mean, you can. <laughs> So Cocker Spaniels are not brainless. They are really smart dogs, but in the grooming salon, it's like they don't have a brain. In the grooming salon, they just all of a sudden become like, <laughs> the only word I can think of is brainless. I swear, but in general, no, they are not uh, stupid dogs. They are really smart dogs. It was just any groomer that's ever worked on a Cocker Spaniel knows exactly what I'm talking about. Um, somebody asked me a question. What did you ever ask me? My zodiac sign. My zodiac sign is Aquarius. My birthday is January 20th. So I'm not going to answer you on how much money I make from my business, but what I will say is that the average pet groomer in Canada, if they are working for themselves, can make anywhere from eighty to $100,000 a year. If they are working hard, and grooming a minimum of seven to 10 dogs a day. They can definitely, and their prices are appropriate. They can definitely make anywhere from 80 to 100 grand a year. And that's in Canadian, guys. I am not the biggest fan of blue healers, and that's not because I don't like them. It's just because they are a very energetic dog they have a strong drive to work and I find grooming them can be difficult because sitting still in a position to get groomed is not something that they are really accustomed to doing and they can also be very um, weary of strangers. So, you know, when they come into the salon, I've never had a blue healer with their tail wagging or, you know, coming up to me to kiss me or they're excited to see people. They're usually very standoffish, very skittish. So, you know, they're not my favorite breed to groom. Not that I've ever had a bad experience with one, but I've never had a loving experience with one. So I can groom 10 dogs in an eight hour shift. So I am a very, very fast groomer. It is not um, common for a groomer to be able to work that quickly and produce quality work. I have no idea why I'm so fast. A part of it would have to be um, the lady that taught me how to groom. She was very go, go, go. And she taught me to be like that from the very start. So I'm a very quick groomer and I have a really good um, process of how I do them all. I'll have two dogs come in every hour. And yeah, I um, that's that's how I learned to do it. So I, I did really well when I salon and I was busy and I was working alone um but it's again it's a lot of work like at the end of grooming 10 dogs in that eight hour shift I am absolutely exhausted I don't want to do anything the rest of the night I am ex just I'll pass out as soon as I hit the pillow so it's sure you can make a lot of money as long as you're willing to work really really hard hey so are you done yet How many dogs have I had in my life? Well, when I was born, I had a Rottweiler. And then when she passed away, we got another Rottweiler. He had liver failure and he died when he was three, I think, which was really upsetting. And so then we got another Rottweiler. Um, he, I don't believe he was a purebred Rottweiler. I think he was mixed with a lab. He had very labish personality. Um, so he actually, I think he lived till he was about 16 years old. And then I had Zoe was my first personal dog, my German Shepherd that passed away in um, uh, August, August with August 1st. Um, no, no, July 31st. Um, so then I had Zoe and then, oh my gosh, I forgot one. Growing up as a kid, I had a miniature schnauzer, Bella. She died when she was 12. Then I got Zoe. Then I got Ace. 
two years after I had Zoe. And then I got Gidget and Melvin. And when I was with my previous partner, we also had a boxer for seven years. So there's been quite a bit of dogs in my life, that's for sure. Yes, the price definitely reflects the size of the dog. I charge an hourly rate of $60 an hour plus tax. That just makes it easier for me to price out dogs versus doing them by size. Boxers are hilarious. He was definitely one of the funniest dogs I've ever had. He was um, super sensitive, super loving, drooled all over the place. He was very hyper and him and Zoe were absolutely best friends and um that's the only dog that zoe actually ever played with in her lifetime was the boxer so that was really sad when we had to separate the two of them you are watching a crazy maltese yorkie going nuts with a ball and a blanket Um, Ace, where did you go? I groomed one Kazin and she or he, he was covered in fleas. It was one of the most worst cases of neglect that I've ever seen. I posted that video on TikTok and it almost got a million views, but I had to take it down because the owner freaked out about the video because he was really embarrassed. So I didn't have to take the video down, but out of respect for the owner, I took it down. So unfortunately, you guys won't get to see that video, but yeah. How do I get my floors so shiny? Well, Ace does this all day and he just, you know, shines it up. I love Australian Shepherds. Um, I think they're great dogs. They definitely need a lot of training and they are horrible for jumping but I really, I do love them. Every single one of them I've ever met, I loved. So if you see his blanket, it has holes all over it. And that's because Ace decides that he'll chew little holes in the blanket for some very odd reason. So we have lots of blankets with lots of holes in them. Go get some water. Gidget is at home. She is not here today. She bringing one dog out of the house is more than enough. <laughs> Will I write a memoir? I don't know. Will people actually read it? Uh, miniature schnauzers are awesome dogs. They are extremely intelligent, very easy to train. They can bark quite a bit and they can be a little bit snippy for grooming. So yes, just train your dog well. Um, boxers have a ridiculous amount of health problems. Um, my boxer, while he was with me, did not have any health problems, but I found out after I moved out that he ended up um, getting a disease that uh, paralyzed him so it was when I once I heard about that I did a lot of research on boxers and found um, a lot of health problems that are common with them and I would personally never get a boxer again after reading up on them it's just too depressing the other dogs do not get annoyed by ace um, ace gets annoyed by the other dogs If I got another dog, it would be a German Shepherd.
Thank you, Sarah, for the super chat. It, it can be difficult. For, I need to learn to look at those because I forget that they're on my channel. <laughs> hey, Alex, it's really nice to hear from you. Yes, we are both from St. Paul Alumni Gang. <laughs> How do I cope with my animals passing? Well, Zoe was really my first real heartbreak of a passing dog because my other dogs were my family dogs. They weren't specifically my dogs. Um, it, it took me about a month. I was pretty upset for about a month. Actually, I'm, I'm still upset here and there. Um, I guess having other dogs really helped me to deal with it because if I came home to an empty house, I think... I would be really upset, so. I would love to do this forever, to be honest. If you're talking about social media, grooming animals and educating the public and entertaining people and making them laugh is definitely the best job I've ever had. I probably will not groom full time, but I would love to be able to continue to produce content full time. I will eventually be coming out with a course. So anybody who wants to learn how to be a pet groomer, this is specifically going to be a course directed towards pet owners that would like to groom their pet at home. And then it would be a beginner course for people that actually wanted to get into grooming as a career. Um, it's gonna take me a while to film that and get the curriculum in order, but that is something that I plan to do in the future. So if you guys are interested in learning how to groom or how to groom your pet at home and save some money, I would love um, for you guys to be able to have the ability to have a course by me. Ace has always been this active, probably the reason why he's so skinny. Um, I didn't really have a specific amount of time for the live. I'm just... Ace is still playing, so I guess I was planning to stop when he stopped playing, but that could be never, so. I wear Crocs when I groom. Um, I did wear Vessies, and they are waterproof, but unfortunately, dog hair got embedded in the fiber, which was really annoying, so I stopped using them, but I just wear Crocs, and they're like the Croc, not typical Crocs with the holes in them. They're, um, I forget what the name of the shoe is, but... They're my favorite ones to wear when grooming. Ace is not up for adoption. He is my favorite dog ever. I'm, I'm lying. I love all my dogs. But Ace has a special place in my heart because he has a one-of-a-kind personality. So this is, see what he's doing now? This is when he starts to make the hole. For whatever, it's like he gets tired and he doesn't want to bury it anymore. So then he just gets frustrated and starts making a hole in the blanket. And that is why we have so many holes in the blanket. I have not groomed a coyote or a wolf. I would really love to groom a wolf dog. Um, I didn't know to give him a blanket. I gave him a ball. And one day he decided that he was going to grab the blanket. And he started playing with the ball and blanket. And then it just became apparent that he loved balls and blankets. Do you want to see my nails? There's nothing really special about them. They're just green. I've only ever groomed one Skipperky. He was a show dog. I never saw him again because he was not from the same country or province. I can't remember, but he flew to a dog show shortly after he was groomed. The blanket is old. I think this is starting to lose battery and I might have to end this live soon. I only ever groomed one bunny before. Dog breed I would recommend for first time owners. For shedding, I would recommend a golden retriever. For non-shedding, I would recommend a Bichon Frise.
Ace is not a rescue dog. Ace I bought from a backyard breeder when I didn't know any better. Um, Melvin is a rescue dog. He he was purchased by a breeder to breed him, but he was not a candidate for breeding. And whatever situation he came from was very poor and he was not in good health. Yes, I recommend rats for pets. I had two rats. They were awesome, super friendly and loving. Scottish Terriers. Scottish Terriers tend to bite. Um, every Scottish Terrier I've ever worked on has tried to bite me. I have a little bit of experience with Brittany Spaniels. I think I've only ever done two in my career. The funniest name for, I've heard for a pet, I had a dog named Fat Kid. That was the funniest name of a dog I have ever groomed. And I, when I asked her why she called the dog Fat Kid, she said when she picked him up as a puppy, it reminded her of a fat child. And so she decided to call him Fat Kid. <laughs> How do we find responsible groomers? I'm gonna put that in a video soon because it's a very common question that I get. So stay tuned for upcoming videos. Um, this thing is dying, so I think it's telling me it's time to end this live if I know how to end it. <laughs> but thank you guys so much for tuning in. I really appreciate it. I will do more lives again soon. Um, you can check out the links that are on my profile for all of my different social media platforms. I do have platforms where I post longer versions of my content. So if you're interested, go to my profile, check out the links and um, yeah. And yes, Ace does snuggle with me. He is the best cuddler out of all of my dogs. And stay tuned for the Shiba Inu coming out on Saturday. And don't forget to check out my brother's channel, The Spicy Nona. Thank you guys for tuning in.